soldiers. Welcome to a new episode of Retro Nightmares. You know what one of my favorite game series is? I'll give you a hint. It gives you a whip and you get to kill vampires. Hell yeah! Throughout its lifespan, it's had some ups and downs, but it's always managed to rebound and give us something great, and it was one of the key benefits to owning an NES. For those who went with Sega, they didn't have it so good in that manner. They eventually got a breath of relief in 1994 with Castlevania Bloodlines, but that was five years after the console's initial release. So that brings up the question, what the hell did the Sega guys do? Well, let me tell you what they fucking did. And I gotta tell you, it ain't pretty. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Ernest E. World, Man of Destiny. No, this is Ernest Evans. Ernest Evans was released in 1991 for the Sega CD in Japan, and it finally came to America for the Genesis in 1992. The story follows Ernest Evans III, who is continuing the quest of his ancestors started to find a hidden treasure that holds the power to save or destroy the world. The key differences between the two versions is that the CDI version has cutscenes between each level that will help narrate the story. So playing it over here meant that you had to read the booklet inside to get an idea of what was going on. Luckily we have Wikipedia so we can just dive right into this thing. But before we get started, we need a Genesis controller. Now where the hell did I put that thing? It's gonna be a shitty day. Uh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, oh my. He's so ugly. Ernest looks like he's been run through a paper shredder. This is not how any character in a game should look. Oh, oh. I don't, let's just pull it together here and start this thing. What, what the hell is he doing? I've seen whips used a billion times before, but this is not it. This is what happens when a child is let loose around the house with a shoestring. Th th this cannot be serious. There's no consistency with his hitbox. If something is near you, you'll hit it. A true master of the whip knows how to aim his target. A Belmont, this guy is not. What the hell am I fighting anyway? Giant dancing worms, bats, and... Porcupines! What the hell kind of dungeon is this? There are alternate weapons, but they all suck. The ones I actually managed to find did, anyways. The rocks did nothing, and the mace was so slow it wasn't even worth using. There is also a very finicky duck crawl and dodge control scheme, but unless you have to use it to crawl under something, it is useless. It will just get you into trouble, often making you roll right into an enemy's attack or even get stuck in the damn scenery. Every time you hit an enemy, it explodes. Not if you kill it, if you hit it. This confuses you and can cause you to think that a smaller enemy is dead when it's actually just waiting behind the animation to attack. And if there's multiple targets on screen being hit by Mr. Bead Whip here, it will cause multiple explosions and will absolutely devastate your frame rate. So here I am, not ten steps into the game, and it's already driving me away with this terrible control scheme. It's an insult to platforming, and this piece of shit isn't helping! Speaking of platforming, in Ernest Evans, it is awful. He clips into the scenery all the time. It's not just sometimes, it's all the time. With climbing ropes, your hands have to be dead on with the rope itself. If you're off by one pixel, you're falling straight down. And God forbid you have to climb a rope that's right next to a rock face. Oh, you're getting into a whole heap of trouble now because there are also random rock faces that you can actually climb and there is no way to tell them apart. Any attempt to climb a rope or a rock face is a pure game of luck. Have at it! Ah, oh, great, as if I didn't like the ropes enough, here's a part where I must climb multiple ropes and avoid the spikes. All right, here we go. I hope I don't fall. No, 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 no stop. Get, get up, no, you idiot! Yeah, in case you didn't notice, if 
you get hit, you will keep getting hit until you get away from the enemy that has you pinned down. And believe me, there's plenty of them. The game has no shortage of enemies that will just get you in an attack loop and completely destroy you. Well, after all that tidy little bullshit, it's time to get some health. Gee, that doesn't look familiar. About frickin' time I'd fight a boss. I'm tired of these stupid enemies. Time to fight something. Wow, nice job guys. I'm trapped in a giant spinning caterpillar with fire and missiles, and a flying avocado goes to top it all off. Actually, all these bosses are just freaking weird. A, a, a coal monster? S seriously? I have to question the design choices that Wolf Team made. There is no theme with these levels or its creatures. It's completely different every time in every level. Now, in most games nowadays, that's okay. But in today's games, we have little cutscenes that show us how we get from one area to another. In this game, we've got nothing. We have to have the Japanese CDI version to know where the fuck we're going. And I don't want a CDI. Even Mario had little post cutscenes to tell you where you're fucking going. Sure, it's just pipes, but it was something. Oh, well, here's something cool. It's a power-up. I wonder what it does. It put me to sleep. It put me to sleep. It put me to sleep. Are you fucking kidding me? And to top it all off, the enemies are hurting me. This isn't freaking fair. I'm losing health because of a stupid joke power-up. Look, game, if you don't have a fan base, you're not allowed to put jokes in your game. You get it? If I picked up something that put me to sleep in a game that's got a developed fan base and is known for being quirky and having jokes, it's okay. I get it. They're joking. It's kind of funny. But when these people do it, it's freaking annoying. And the placement of this power-up is on a platform that must be accessed to reach the next boss. There is no way around it. I've tried jumping it, and I still picked it up. It is pointless. It is only there to piss me off, and it happens every single damn time. This game has been putting me down since the moment I picked it up. Well, you know what? Not anymore. It's time to beat this thing. Okay, what the heck are these? Are, are they enemies? Are, are they gonna hurt? Y you know what? I really don't care anymore. If these things kill me, I'm completely fine with that. I'll take it as a sign to completely destroy this game. Who knows what lies ahead for such a man? puke after that oh man oh, that was a thing oh wow a boss that actually seems to belong in this game nice well, well that was easy the only boss in the game that makes sense and it's easier than glass joe good job guys good job we're up in the streets now come on how did i get up here was everything i did just below the street Hmm, a car ride, is it? And boy, what a car ride it is. There are enough explosions going on here to make Michael Bay blush. Uh, oh, oh, I, I, I'm so, so uh, yep, they're, they're dead. We, we made it across the street just fine, but they're dead. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. You gonna make it? <laughs> Merely a flesh wound, Ben. Merely a wound upon my flesh. And now I'm being chased by Guile. 
with knives. That's it! That's my breaking point! I draw the line right there! I will not tolerate being chased by Giles with knives. That's the line, people. Giles with knives. Giles with knives! Usually I try to find the good in every game I play, but here it's just nowhere to be found. I don't care about the story because I don't feel like I'm a part of it. The combat is terrible and sums down to a 2D hack and slash, and a terrible one at that. Either you hit everything or you hit nothing. The platform is based around making jumps guaranteed to get you hurt or send you to an earlier part of the level. The enemies are uninventive and lame, except for maybe the magician boss, and it's way too easy to just die from enemies with a set pattern because they lock you into place. They never respawn after they're dead, but that's just one chocolate chip on this giant raisin cookie. There was nothing good here. They tried to be new and intuitive with the duck and dodge system, but it was a bust and always got me killed. Everything here is just downright awful. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to join me next time on Retro Nightmares. Dismissed.